This is my review of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. In 3D? No, not in 3D. It... In 3D? Stop! In 3D? If I can warn you about one thing with this film, don't go and see it in 3D. It was absolutely pointless. Just another moneymaker. So here's my review of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. But first, let's recap the Harry Potter franchise. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Innovative special effects and picture-perfect child acting. I'm proud to say that this is one of the greatest children films of all time. The second film in the Harry Potter franchise, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It's no doubt that Columbus did better with the second film, however the storyline just wasn't as good and because of that at times I did feel bored. Number three, the most critically acclaimed of the Potter franchise, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I don't mind the darkness of the third film and really it did bring a new level to the Harry Potter franchise, however it is the shortest film of the Harry Potter franchise and still, it felt like the longest film to me. Number four, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So now we bring in our third director. Um, I don't know what his name is, and I, and I really don't care. He was brought in here to basically make the romance levels and the relationships uh, blossom. That didn't happen. I felt bored. I felt like this was just a recap of the book. It's the worst Harry Potter film thus far on my countdown. The fifth film, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So this is rated the lowest of the Harry Potter films. However, I did feel that this was better than Goblet of Fire. This film is dedicated to staying true to the novel. And on top of that, it is the best performances by the actors thus far in the franchise. Now, number six, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And I feel that it's on par, or almost on par, with the original Harry Potter film. Half-Blood Prince is exciting, refreshing, and stands alone as its own film. If you don't pay attention to the franchise at all, you can go into Half-Blood Prince and still enjoy the rest of the series. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one. It is amazing that the series is still able to hold its own after six years. Films. And now finally, we are here. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. So does it live up to the hype? Oh my god, yes it does. This is the 8th film in the Harry Potter franchise, and yet it is the best one. They saved the best for last, and they tried extremely hard to make sure that this film was picture perfect. And it is. I can say that I've watched every single Harry Potter film in this last week, and at least 20 minutes of each film, I felt bored, or I just wanted to ignore the film, or I drifted off at some point. This one kept me focused the entire time. It wasn't too long either. If you're not a Harry Potter fan at all, I mean, you have to know what Harry Potter is. Even if this is your first Potter experience, go and enjoy this film, because it stands alone. Just don't see it in 3D. In 3D? <laughs> So let's let's break it down right now. Um, the acting was amazing. I mean, these guys have have developed as actors. I mean, all of them, not just the front three, but everyone involved. All of these kids have evolved as actors. It feels like a ten-year acting school put on screen, and now it's graduation day. This was where they shine. In this film, Voldemort, I, I know I know, I'm probably going to get a lot of backlash for saying this, but I really think after watching this film, he is my number one villain of all time. Before this, I would have to say it was Darth Vader. Voldemort, oh my god. I, I don't know what else to say about this. Um, some of the critics out there right now are saying that this film was just a special effects best. Like, it meant nothing, it just had a bunch of special effects. I am saying right now that those critics out there, those those two critics right now that are on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, we'll put one down here right now, and the other right now. These two critics don't have the brain capacity to watch TV while a fly is flying around their room. They, they get so annoyed and distracted, it, it it's impossible for them to do anything. And that's the only reason that anybody would give this film a bad review. I give Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part to a 10 out of 10. This film wrapped up everything perfectly. I got you got to give credit to J.K. Rowling for writing such an such amazing novels. And I also think that everyone needs to give credit to uh, Chris Columbus. Him and his crew in the first film are what set everything up decided what everything was going to be, decided what Quidditch was going to look like, what the wardrobe was going to look like, what, where they were going to film this film. They, they envisioned this entire thing that J.K. Rowling had going on, and because of that, I'd say that Chris, Chris Columbus is, is, is as much a part of this as J.K. Rowling was. I'm going to say Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is 
the best film so far of 2011. This has been my review of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Check us out next week as we review Captain America, The First Avenger.